Hello YouTube and Facebook people, welcome back to my videos. Today is day three of Vlogtober. Thank you for coming back. It's 31 days straight of videos. That's a video every single day for 31 days. Um, yeah, that's a lot of videos. <laughs> so in today's video, we are actually gonna be cleaning some boots. If you saw in day one's video, I am on a shoe cleaning kick and I'm just gonna keep going with it because I have a lot of shoes that need, they need help. <laughs> these actually are for me. I found these at the bins. They're a pair of Ariat, which is a pretty pricey brand. I think these rank up there with Doc Martens. So pretty pricey shoe, no laces, but I'm okay with that. I think I'm actually gonna put um, ribbon laces to kind of feminize them. I think it'll be pretty cool. Um, but yeah, in that first video, I had mentioned that I use the Dollar Tree shoe polish. Whew, sorry. <laughs> and I use this stuff regularly. Anytime I do a leather shoe, this is what I use. But I also said that I have this and I haven't tried it yet. So that's what we're going to do today. We are going to compare the both of them. Um, let me give you the breakdown on cost. Surprisingly, this isn't that expensive for the Doc Martin Wonder Bomb. Um, I bought this one in Dillard's. So let's see. With this one, $10, and you get 79.379 grams. And if you break that down per gram, it is 0.12597, which is 13 cents a gram. The Dollar Tree, you get this for a dollar, you get 32 grams total, that's both colors combined, and that breaks down to 0 0.03125, so three cents a gram, which this actually, like I said, not too expensive, but if you're doing it a lot and you're doing it for reselling, it's, it is kind of expensive to use this one, and I really like the way this one works, but we'll see how it works, and... If you're getting it for your personal use, maybe it will be worth it. Or maybe if you have a higher end pair of shoes that you really want to make sure you got the good stuff, we'll also see if it's if it's worth it. Here's just a quick view of what we'll be using. Got my boots, obviously. The Doc Martin Wonder Bomb. My Norwex towel that I mentioned in my first video. The Dollar Tree polish. And then just this shoe brush. Voice over Valerie. Two thumbs up. <laughs> so here are the boots. This is the before. Nothing's been done to them yet. They're both equally dirty, which is important so that we can have a fair test. They're both equally dried out with the leather. So here's the right boot. I'm going to start out using the Norwex towel. I get a corner of it wet, but I start out with the dry end to just dust off the dirt. And then I flip it over to use the wet side of it. As you can see, I'm going to use the wet side to get off any of the dirt that I missed. Sometimes you can find these Norwex towels at like the bins or even at regular Goodwills, but they just work really good for scrubbing. After you're done getting all the dirt off, then you can go ahead and get your polish. The, the Dollar Tree one comes with two, a brown and a black. Obviously, we're going to use the black on the black shoes. Um, the rag that comes with it, I use half of it for the brown and then half for the black so that I make sure not to mix the colors. I don't, I've don't. i never mixed the two, so I don't know if it would damage a shoe if you use the wrong color, but um, I'm not really going to try and test that one out. <laughs> um, yeah, so you just start buffing it in. And it takes a little while. This took me about six minutes to do this shoe. This is the right shoe, I should mention. You want to make sure to go ahead and get the tip of the shoe uh, really good because this is where most of the wear is going to be. So I'm just showing you both sides, the difference between the polished and the unpolished. And yeah, just get into all the cracks and like where the seams are. And you just keep going until you're satisfied with the way it looks. So polishing this shoe took me about six minutes. And I think I could have done it faster if I wasn't looking up at the camera to make sure I was in frame. So I bet it would take five minutes, maybe a little less. But trying to use this little rag sometimes can be difficult. Like you can see me, I keep readjusting to hold on to it. Um, that's maybe my only complaint with the Dollar Tree is the rag that comes with it. Definitely make sure to get the tongue good. 
yeah, get the whole tongue. I mean, I think it came out pretty good. And surprisingly, my hands didn't get dirty. Using the rag, it's actually easier to maneuver, I think. And I'll just show you real quick. That's without anything on it, just been dusted off. And then here is with the shoe polish. Crazy difference. If you're not doing anything to your leathers, I definitely recommend at least buying the Dollar Tree one. But I just think that's a crazy difference. Uh, yeah, that's awesome. That's just from the Dollar Tree right there. Okay, now I'm gonna do the Dr. Martens. This next footage will be of the Doc Martin Wonder Balm. So we'll give it a try and see how it works. I'll be using the sponge that comes with it. I'll also, should I read you the directions? I should probably read you the directions, huh? Sorry, there's my finger in the camera. So the directions on the Doc Martens is apply, I lost my spa I lost my spot already. <laughs> One word in, wow. Apply a small amount of balm onto the leather using the sponge, work well into the seams, and allow to dry. Do not use on on I'm from New York. Do not use on suede or patent leathers. Caution keep out of reach of children. You do not want to balm your children with this. You've been warned. So with the Doc Martin Wonder Balm, it's gonna be the exact same process. I like how it had this little container for the sponge, but then I guess you only get half a container full of the product because they had to make room for the sponge, but that's okay. I do like how compact it is. So I accidentally got too much on my first try because I wasn't sure what the texture was going to be. Um, yeah, that first swipe, I kind of doubted it and I was like, oh, this is a really greasy texture. But then as I started to rub it in, it was actually really smooth. Like it went on smooth and as you could see it went in really easy between the uh the buckles the loops <laughs> i don't know what you call those but it got into tiny spaces and it was easy to get in between the seams and the crevices it went really fast this one only took me four minutes to do and i think that's because of the sponge the sponge is very very handy i think if you could find the sponge that's the same texture and density for the Dollar Tree um, polish, I think it would work really, really, really good with it. So the product's good, but I really liked the sponge that came with it. Again, get the tongue, and getting the tongue with this one was easy too because you had the sponge to hold on to and it's easy to grip. Yeah, that's the finished product right there. I really like the way it came out and then putting it back together, easy to store. So here is the final result. I've got both finished shoes sitting next to each other. Each one is sitting next to its corresponding shoe polish. In my opinion, I guess the Doc Martin one does look, um, it's a deeper black, it's a shinier finish. Here's a closer up view. As you can see, you can see more wrinkles in the Dollar Tree polish, and I guess I never noticed it because, <clears throat> sorry, <laughs> I never had anything to compare it to. So having it next to a shoe that had been used with the Doc Martin balm, there's a clear difference. But it all comes down to what you want to spend on a shoe polish. It's $1 versus $10. And if you're just using it for resale, honestly, I think the Dollar Tree one will do just fine. Um, I'll use the Doc Martin one. Obviously, I have it, and I think I might actually go back and redo the Dollar Tree shoe just so it matches my Doc Martin shoe. So, yeah. Yeah, right there. You can definitely see one's clearly shinier, but they're both really good shoe polishes. As I said, the Dollar Tree polish took me about six minutes to polish the right shoe. Um, it was not messy at all. The consistency of this is really nice. <laughs> the Doc Martin balm took me about four minutes, so two minutes shorter, but it was a bit messier. I got it on my fingers, but I think it went faster because of the sponge that's in here. It's actually a pretty sturdy sponge, and it was easy to get into the crevices. Neither of them had a smell to them. Let's see, this one's Dollar Tree. It's got a light shoe polish smell. Doc Martin, there's zero smell. I can smell the actual leather of the shoe. So if that's something you're worried about for selling, Poshmark or eBay or whatever, the Doc Martin is scentless, 
but this Dollar Tree one it's not a heavy scent and I think some people actually do like the smell of shoe polish so it depends on what your needs are the Dollar Tree one is already dried and it's wearable right now whereas the Doc Martin one like I said in the instructions it said to let it sit for a day to dry you can definitely feel that it's greasier not bad but you can feel that there is something on it and I'm guessing if you get these dusty right now it's not gonna be good and as I mentioned in the voiceover two thumbs up um, <laughs> you can see wrinkles left in the Dollar Tree shoe which for me personally not a big deal if it was for my personal shoes like, I don't care but I guess if you are reselling it does condition them pretty good and it gets rid of a lot of the wrinkles so it just depends on what your needs are and what you want how much you want to spend ten dollars which is not a lot in my opinion or one dollar which is really not a lot <laughs> I think I still stick to my original opinion I really like the Dollar Tree shoe polishes I like that you get a black and a brown it's versatile it's cheap I do however really like the Dr. Martin Balm. It worked good. It got rid of a lot of wrinkles. If you were doing this reselling, like I said, it's a bit pricier, but I guess if you're selling like a better brand shoe and you really need to bring it back to life, maybe it is worth the investment. But right out of the gate, I would say go get you the Dollar Tree ones, test it out, see if it meets all your needs because then it's only a dollar. Um, yeah, I'm gonna have to say I still like my Dollar Tree stuff, especially for reselling, but it's not like this one will go to waste. I have a collection. My collection for my personal Doc Martens is growing, and I'll just use this for my shoes, or if I find like a fancy pair of shoes at the bins, I'll probably use this on it for reselling. So just depends on what your financial needs are and what you're looking for in a shoe polish. Both are good deals. One's a little bit better of a deal. So. Y'all tell me, have you used either of these? I do believe Little Black Hanger uses the Dollar Tree ones as well. I've been using this same one for a year and a half-ish and no complaints from me. So yeah, that's everything I have. Um, <laughs> there's nothing that you can buy in this video. Sorry, these beauties are for me. But you can feel free to visit my Poshmark closet at Valamilk. Also, you can find me on Instagram. It's my personal page. Whole lot of me. <laughs> I will be back tomorrow for day four of Vlogtober. A few of my friends are doing Vlogtober as well. Lynn from Here's Lynn. She's the one that got us all into it. Go visit her channel. Show her support. She's already uploaded day three. Three. Oh my goodness, Valerie. Day three. Whew been a long day she's already uploaded day three so go watch her video there's also Kimmy from one thread at a time she uploaded her first vlogtober video today and it's a pretty cool one so go watch it there's also Candace she's doing vlogtober so go show her some support and watch her videos and I will see you guys tomorrow for day four bye